Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting quick VFX tutorial where I will show you some cool filmmaking and visual effects tips and tricks without boring you for a full 30 minutes. If like me, you export a ton of videos from Adobe After Effects every week, the last thing you want to do is reconfigure your output settings for every single file. Whether you use the inbuilt rendering queue or Adobe Media Encoder, you can create custom presets that you can then apply and customize with a few simple clicks to any file that you are trying to export. In this quick tutorial, I will show you how to create, apply and manage custom presets in Adobe After Effects. This is going to be a low intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you know how to export videos from Adobe After Effects and that you have watched my tutorial on Adobe Media Encoder. If you haven't yet, bad audience. I, I mean, go watch it. It will make this tutorial a lot easier to understand. But now enough talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Howdy doodly and welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects. Now, this tutorial is not going to be particularly flashy, but hopefully it'll give you some good tips on how to optimize your export process to make your entire workflow just a little bit more seamless. Let's assume I'm working on a tutorial and I have a simple composition here where I've green screened myself onto a new backdrop. I'm happy with how all of this looks, so let's export it, hitting Ctrl M to add the composition to the render queue, and then we can configure the output settings. In the render queue, you have three elements that you can configure. You can configure the render settings, and if I click on this here, it'll open up the render settings. And the render settings simply define how After Effects is going to render the contents of your composition. It doesn't specify where they're being rendered to, it just specifies how they're being rendered out. This includes things like whether you want to render it at the best settings or as a wireframe or draft, the resolution, whether to use the disk cache, things like whether to use proxies, effects, solo switches, your guide layers, color depth, and then it's got a whole bunch of other settings like whether to use frame blending, field renders, motion blur, and which time spent to actually export. Let's say I actually wanted to export this at 32 bits per channel for the color, and maybe I'll say I don't actually want to use full resolution, maybe I just want to render it at half resolution. Let's hit OK. And my render settings have changed to custom because I've modified the standard best settings preset. Now, once After Effects renders the composition using the render settings, it actually flows into the output module. And the output module, let's click on this, this defines how the rendered composition is being saved to disk. In here, you can configure the output format. So let's say I want to export this as a QuickTime, which is my usual format that I use. And then let's go into the format options and in here I can select the video codec and the audio codec. So maybe I'll change the video codec to, well, H.264 is pretty good. Let's ramp the quality up to 100%, hit OK. And I don't need to resize it or crop it and let's disable the audio output for now. And let's hit OK. And again, this has now been customized, so this is a custom modification of a preset. And then over on the right hand side you define where the file is actually being saved on your hard drive. So let's click on that and let's define a new output path. And then you can simply render out the file by hitting the render button. Let's assume that all rendered out fine. And let's say we want to render out another composition from this project. Here I have one that is the outro for the tutorial. And let's say we want to export this with the exact same settings. So Ctrl M to edit to the render queue. And now I have to reconfigure everything. I again have to go into render settings. I have to change this to 32 bits per channel, half resolution and then come into the output module and define that to be quick time. Um, yeah, 100% I think was okay for the output quality, audio output off, hit okay, and then again define the output path. So I basically have to reset everything up every single time I add an item to my render queue and that is bloody painful. Let me delete all of the items in my render queue and let's start this process again. Here I am in the first composition and let's add it to the render queue. And now, instead of customizing these things, let's actually define new templates. So under render settings, I can actually pop this open and great, you can't see it. At the very bottom, there's actually an option for make template. So I'm going to click on make template. And here I can now define a new template. So let's say I'm going to call this Surface Studio Export Template. And down here, it shows me all of the render settings that are currently defined for this template. So in here, I can simply go edit. And this brings up the render settings, but these are the render settings for this template that I'm defining. So 
These ones are going to be saved against the Surface Studio export template. And in here, let's change the resolution to half, color depth to 32 bits per channel. Let's hit OK, hit OK. And now you can see that the Surface Studio export template is assigned to my render settings. And in this drop down menu, we can actually select the Surface Studio export template. So this is now applied to our render settings and in the output module, let's do the exact same thing because again, we wanna set up reusable settings so we don't have to apply them every single time because it is really annoying. So in output settings, let's expand this and ah, there you can see it, make template. So let's click make template. Let's call this Surface Studio output template. And again, it shows you all of the pre-selected settings here, but we can simply click on edit to bring up the output module settings. And in here, let's change this to QuickTime Format options, 100%. I think I'm gonna leave this on the H.264. I just really like the codec. It's, it's, it's a really good general codec. Gives you good quality at a fairly reasonable file size. Let's hit OK. Again, no resize or crop, but let's disable the audio output. Let's hit OK. These settings have just been updated, so it's now QuickTime format in H.264. Let's hit OK. And now our output module is defined to be the Surface Studio output template. And as before, we can now select the Surface Studio output template from this drop down menu on the output module. The only thing you can't create templates for is the output path, but it actually does come with a few cool preset options like naming it automatically after the comp folder and name. Yeah, you can't see the option on my screen, unfortunately, but there's a custom option down here. So for now, let's say that's all okay. And again, we would render out this composition. Now let's get to the second composition again. Again, this is the outro for the tutorial and I wanna render that out with the exact same settings. So once again, let's add it to the render queue with Control M. You will notice that for this new item in the render queue, the render settings are back to best settings and the output module is back to lossless. However, because we've saved the settings that we've applied to our previous composition in templates, we can now simply reapply those templates. We can come into the render settings and simply reselect the Surface Studio export template. And under output module, we can simply reselect the Surface Studio output template. This will then apply the exact same settings that we did before to this new item in the render queue. Now, this should make things a whole lot easier already, but there's another step that we can do to further optimize this process. Let's go into the render settings and let's again select make template. Now, by clicking make template, After Effects has automatically created a new template called Untitled One, which I didn't really want. I don't actually want to create a new template, so let's delete that one for now. Instead, I want to focus on these default settings up here at the top. There are five different default settings, and these ones are the templates that are going to be applied to your render settings when you add a new item into the render queue. The reason there are five different defaults is because it depends on what type of item you're adding into your render queue. So you can specify different templates to be applied to your item when you render out a movie. So that's just when you're exporting your standard composition, when you export a single frame. Then there is pre-render, because After Effects actually allows you to pre-render a composition, which is kind of meant for previews, so usually you don't use full settings for that. And then you have defaults for when you render out a movie proxy or a still proxy. So what I want to do is I actually want to change my movie default because that is the one that we were using. We were exporting a composition as a movie file. So this is the preset that would get applied, best settings. Let's switch that over to be Surface Studio Export Template. Let's hit okay. And we've only defined the template that gets applied to render settings. Let's go into the output module and do the same thing. Let's pop open output module, go to make template. And again, because After Effects created us one called Untitled One, let's delete that. And again, you have five different defaults. So there's one for movie, for frame, for rendering a current preview, for pre-rendering, and for creating a movie proxy. Again, the one that I'm interested in is the movie default. So let's change that from lossless over to our Surface Studio output template. Let's hit OK. And let's delete these items from the render queue again. And let's start this whole process over. Let's go into our composition for the intro. And let's add it into the render queue with Ctrl M. And you will see that After Effects automatically applied my selected render settings and my output module as I've defined it in my default. So all I have to do is define where to render the file to and then hit render. I can then come into my second composition and do the exact same thing. Once I'm happy with it, add it to my render queue and it will get exported with the exact same settings that I've defined. 
I actually have quite a number of different templates defined for render settings and output modules depending on what I need to render out, whether I need to include alpha channel, it needs to be a PNG or maybe a JPEG sequence. So play around with this. There's so much you can do with the templates. They're a bit clunky to use personally. I think the interface could use some improvement, but once you've got your template set up and you know which ones to use in which case, it'll make your workflow a whole lot quicker. Finally, before I let you go, let's look at defining presets in Adobe Media Encoder. With any unrendered items in your render queue, you can simply click on Queue in Adobe Media Encoder to send all of them to the Adobe Media Encoder rendering queue. Or you can come into your composition and instead of pressing Ctrl M, we can press Ctrl Alt and M. And there it is, added to the Adobe Media Encoder rendering queue. And over on the right hand side, I've got a whole bunch of presets. Adobe Media Coda I really like because it does contain so many presets, especially all of my YouTube ones like YouTube 1080p, which is actually the one that I usually use for most of the things that I upload to YouTube. But similar to After Effects, you can actually define presets and manage them yourself. So under User Presets and Groups, I have a folder for Surface Studio, which currently just contains a few individual customized ones, but obviously you can define your own folders. So let's create a new one and call this one Tutorial. And with the folder selected, I can come up into the preset browser and simply go create a new preset. And Adobe Media Encoder allows you to create two types of presets. So there's encoding presets and ingest presets. An encoding preset is exactly what the name suggests. It's a preset used for encoding your video files. And an ingest preset gets used by the watch folders in Adobe Media Encoder. And I've covered that in my Adobe Media Encoder tutorial already, so I'm not going to repeat myself here. Instead, let's just create an encoding preset and you will see the export format dialog. Let's give our preset a name. Let's call it tutorial preset. And let's change the format to, maybe we'll go with the H264, which will turn into an MP4 file. And then at the bottom here, you can define all of your compression settings for video and audio and effects and everything else to do with how you want to encode your file. Now, I am planning to make a video at some point that focuses on video compression. It's just a really complex subject and it's very technical and there is no easy answer on which codec is best for my video just because it depends on the content in the video and what you want to do with it in the end and what file sizes you're willing to tolerate. And there's so many variables. So again, that's going to be the subject for another tutorial. Um, for general videos that I upload to YouTube, again, I just use the H.264 and my compression is usually, eh, that's probably a bit low. I probably usually go around 30 megabits per second um, for the bitrate and that gives me a fairly okay-ish sized file with good quality. Um, then once you're done with setting up all of your presets, you can hit OK. Let's drag the preset into our folder and to apply it to the item in our queue, simply drag and drop it on. And there you go. If I was to render this out, I would now render out my intro comp from After Effects with my new tutorial preset and I can easily apply this to any other files that I might be pushing through Adobe Media Encoder. Now, as I said, this probably wasn't the most bristling tutorial, but hopefully you learned something useful anyways. Once you identify the common formats that you use for exporting most of your files and you convert them into presets and defaults, your whole export process will go a whole lot faster. And it's as easy as that. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash Surface Studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.